I have to ask you because I'm blown away by the scene when that dinosaur licks your face. Oh yes. How did they shoot that? Because I've seen some behind the scenes footage of like this weird looking thing with a red tongue. What do you mean weird? <laughs> <laughs> they dipped this fairly phallic looking tongue in what seemed to be KY jelly <laughs> and then started rubbing it across my face. And I was like, all right. <laughs> If this doesn't make it in the movie, I'm gonna. I know that I'm just being messed with. Uh, that's how they did it. They basically had to, you know, they were gonna create the dinosaur around it CG, but the tongue itself, because it was touching me and like leaving some saliva or some slobber, that had to be practical. So there was someone standing over me with dick on a stick, <laughs> dipped in KY jelly, and I was like, ah, Hollywood. <laughs> got the job. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, well, I remember when the first one came out, we, were, we, we discussed the idea of your character, the whole heels element of it. Yes. And I love the way J.A. handled it in this movie. There's actually a lot of shoes shots in this yeah. one. I noticed that. Yeah. So when we first meet you, we have the heels, we go up to your face. Mm -hmm. Then we have a shot of you wearing the boots. Mm -hmm. And even the little girl, we see her chucks as she's backing mm -hmm. into that. Can you talk about, was that a conscious decision with the, that, with the idea of the heels in the first one? And what did J.A. want to do with that this time? Well, I mean, it's it's... Uh, it's really funny because I think in Europe there, it, there wasn't as much sort of like fervor around the heels, so he didn't actually clock that. Like he didn't know about that oh, whole wow. controversy and stuff. And and um, whereas I was, you know, keenly keenly aware of it. Um, and uh, yeah, we knew that we wanted to get that boot shot. That was something that we for sure planned for. But when I first read the script, uh, there it said that in the first scene I was wearing sneakers, and I was like, no. <laughs> No, she's wearing I heels. I love that. <laughs> I buy the dinosaurs. I don't buy that Claire wears sneakers. I love the way he handled that. I'm a huge fan of what Stan Winston did in 93 with the animatronics. And there's yeah. that great shot in the trailer when you guys are in the back of that truck yes. with the T-Rex. Talk about what was going on, what was moving, because you get on top of them at one point. What was actually happening in that scene? That was, that was an animatronic uh, T-Rex. Yep. So, so what you see in the movie was pretty much what we were experiencing in exactly. real life. The, the yep. head of the T-Rex was there. The body was was built. There was a tarp over. Does the, the eye body. really open? Oh, the eye yes. really opens. No, yeah. no, no. All of that was eye totally opens. real. Moves I think around. even the eye, I believe maybe even the eye dilates. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. Animatronically, I can't. I don't. Don't. I, I think so. But there's a whole team of people working underneath that tractor trailer. Uh, each operating a different part of the this you know half a million dollar puppet, you know its eyebrows articulating, its lips, its and the, this it felt lifelike. It looked so lifelike. It was really incredible. We both got to take our kids to like introduce them to the T Rex. Really? And they were like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So, That's awesome. We both got to traumatize our children. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember in the first one with the Apatosaurus, you guys had that animatronic, yes. which is really cool as well. Yeah. Now, Chris, I've always wanted to yeah. ask you this. This is unrelated to the film, but your Twitter handle, Pratt, Pratt, Pratt. Yes. How did they come, how did you come up with the three? Was there, is there a story as to why you have well, the three? Well, I was a little late to, to the social media game and someone had already taken Chris Pratt. <laughs> and so I put in Chris Pratt and then uh, it was taken. So they were like, Chris Pratt six or whatever, Chris Pratt 20. And then I was like, no. And then there was one that was like the real Chris Pratt. I was like, oh, it's kind of like, uh, it's, that stinks. So that's a little douchey. So I just thought Pratt Pratt. And then I was like, wait, if I'm gonna go Pratt Pratt, I should be Pratt Pratt Pratt. <laughs> so I, I decided to do it and I stuck to it. But then I didn't, I didn't realize that all of those letters in my name actually reduced from the character count. So I was like, I've actually taken up a lot of what I can say with just my name. Yeah. But then it, it just it just stuck, and so I've stuck with it. Last question for you. One of the things about this movie that I love is it kind of shows that idea of animals just being these uh, amazing creatures. And the idea, it, it's harder for me, I don't know if it is for you guys, to watch animals get hurt on camera oh than gosh. it is to watch humans for yes. some weird reason. Yes. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I mean, like there, I was devastated during some of these animal sequences. Yeah. But then people died, and it's like, yeah! Like, yeah. The action scenes, but why do you think that is? Well, I think it's that, you know, the, the bad guys, the villains in the Jurassic movies are always ultimately human beings that are yeah. that are basically like just super greedy, you know, like like that's right. that's what is needing to be squashed it literally <laughs> and figuratively <laughs> in in the Jurassic movie and, and whereas these animals and it's cool because now this is the fifth one of these movies, we can really get there, yeah. they're innocents. You know, they, the, these animals are innocent. And and I think therefore seeing that, you know, them putting in, them being put in perilous situations because of greed um, is something that's really, or because of natural disasters or whatever, there's, there's real tragedy in that. We've created something with these animals. And I think we have this inherent feeling inside of all of us to 
steward and care for the things that are are, are our responsible to shepherd you know and yeah. so like uh we created these these monsters and they don't even know they're monsters it's a little like frankenstein or something you know uh you, you can't help but have feel empathy and, and especially i think in this movie because we really the focus between man and beast it does that it, 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 that relationship changes a little bit in this movie yeah. and we focus more on sort of like a feeling of love and responsibility and and caring for animals versus just running from them or, yeah. or staring at them in wonder. So we were just discussing what, this is a very famous place because Sam Neill shot that, that really cool scene with the kids. The log is right down there. The great there. Sam Neill. Yeah. Let's not invoke his name without a moment of <sighs> sacred respect <Yes>. and admiration. <laughs> he is amazing. Yeah. So the great Richard Attenborough once said. <laughs> Richard Attenborough, another moment of yeah. great, great respect. Yes. He said, welcome to Jurassic Park. He did. You say welcome oh, to Jurassic World. Welcome to Jurassic World. I want to know what that was like for you. Like, did you actually go back and watch Richard's line? Did you try and say it similarly to how he did it? Did you think about how he said it and how you were going to perform it? Interesting idea. Nobody's asked that. I, I, um, you know, yes, I'm nothing if not conscientious. And besides working on the part in various ways, I saw the first couple of movies. Went to see who, who, who am I again and what and what how this all start. Yes. So I had a clear and fr fresh version of that. Oh yeah, well, just thinking about Richard and seeing him again reminded me how spectacular he was. He was spectacular, you know, I had a scene with him. Yeah, he was spectacular. He was, very, he was a great teacher too. Ah, hmm. uh, yeah, I guess that's right. At the end of this movie I say, not to give anything away. It's in the trailer well, though. It's in the trailer. Yeah. Welcome to Jurassic World. Did you say it with a certain inflection to kind of do it like Richard I did, did? No, I didn't. Huh. I, I it didn't. sounds like, you, it, it, to me, it was okay. like a, it was a perfect... Although, like, yes, now that you're thinking, I think I sort of had a, one of the notions that was maybe informing me was, yes, a kind of a musical reprise, <laughs> call back to, yes, welcome to Jurassic Park. He said, welcome to Jurassic Park. Yeah. Welcome to Jurassic World. Yes, we're on the frontier of something amazing, but in my case, potentially, I have an expanded context for what I'm talking about. Yeah, something like that. I want to nerd out with you because there's a scene in Jurassic Park in the 93 Spielberg film which still holds up today. Really? The movie's a masterpiece, but there's a great shot where Steven it starts Spielberg. in your face and it goes down to the puddle with the foot on the ground, your reflection is still in the T-Rex's yes. reflection, yes. and then the water ripples. Yes. How did they do the water ripple when you, when you were sitting there? Like, do you remember Spielberg shooting that? Another very good question, yeah. He's so masterful, you know, he's prepared and he's got everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I, were we outdoors or were we on a sound stage? I think, I think we were he, he, here, and I remember getting all set up, and yes, they've left me alone, and boom, boom, what's that? Oh, I say I'm fairly alarmed here. I, uh, I think to get that shot finally, there was a, they'd set up some mossy, you know, the turf that was like the other turf, but they cooked it up uh, over a board of some kind. I think it was kind of low tech, as I remember. And I think, you know, somebody off camera went, you know, like that. So, you know, if you do that with a, you know, little puddle on top, you know, right, you can kind of create that. But it was, that's right. I haven't really thought about that. But even at the time, I thought, Look at you guys, pretty, pretty nifty. I read somewhere that the actual uh, water cup, the cup that actually moves, that was a guitar string, that they like put, like that's how they were able to get the uh, the ripple of the water in the cup. I, I read that somewhere. I don't know if that's true. But that's kind of cool. That, well, that's how they get me to to do my blocking. <laughs> I'm always I always come with a guitar string attached, and they you know I don't go anywhere unless I feel oh okay I guess it's time to hit that mark yeah. oh. That's because the guitar string is, is there. That's not true. But yeah, I, I never heard that guitar string story. Maybe. For, for you, though, um, the amount of scenes you have in this film, you're, it's obviously one particular scene that's kind of spread out into two sections of the film. Did you shoot for one day? One it was day, one, one day. day. One day only. One day only. I worked on it for a few months. As soon as I had the part, I kept working on it. But it all, it all the chips fell where they may have fallen. <laughs> And then last question. For On you. one day in Pinewood Studios in London. Yeah. Last question before I go. Stan Winston's obviously one of the greatest. Uh, we'll, we'll take a little pause for him as well. He's amazing. I'm amazing. I'm curious in that. He did the animatronic uh, version of the, the effects in the first couple of movies. God. Yes. When, you got, when you and Laura were in that car as it was rushing away and yes. she's screaming, was anything actually chasing you or was that fully CG? That was fully CG. Yeah, in the car, like many of the things, they uh, they said, and it's a, when a, when a two-person scene with a two-shot, 
we had to be looking at the same thing. So I couldn't just go, okay, take a picture of me. Hey, there it is. I decide where it is. Hey, there it is. What are you doing over there? We got to follow it together. So there's a guy with a big stick and a tennis ball, I think, on the thing. Laura, are you watching that thing? Okay, I'm watching it too. Something like must that. Must go faster. She's scream, must go faster, it says. Uh, how about that? And then Steven Spielberg had a bullhorn. And he would go, Rawr, okay, you kids, go look at that thing. Rawr, rawr. And, you know, and, and we would go like that. In contrast to J.A. Bayona's set, he had a sound system where there were dinosaur roars that would, in fact, shake your bones. Cool, yep, man. Yep. Thank you so much for nerding out with me. This has been an absolute pleasure, man. Pleasure. I was nine years old when I saw that movie. It changed my life. And to be here with you today, uh, this is like crazy. It's me too. It's You're a sweet man. You. My Thank pleasure. You. Thank you, you so much. Really All right, I, I got to talk to you about animatronics, because obviously Stan Winston, you know, the 93 movie, was such a brilliant person with the T-Rex. And obviously in Jurassic World Collins film, they had the Apatosaurus, which was yeah. uh, the animatronic head portion. But you have tons of them in this movie. You have yeah. Blue, you have a T-Rex. Talk about what was the coolest animatronic for you to see working, Cause, because there's that great shot in the back of that truck with Bryce and Chris doing the animatronic with the T-Rex. Well, I think it's a movie that talks about the relation that uh, we have towards the dinosaurs. So in that sense, we had to have this interaction with the actors and the dinosaurs, so I push for having as much, as many animatronics as possible in order to have the camera very close from the actors and the animatronics or have the actors touching the dinosaurs. Yeah. Now, the Dracula moment where the fingers are kind of going towards the girl, was that animatronic or was that CG? Cause that That's looks, CG. It looks so good. You can't <laughs> even tell. I think the good thing about having animatronics is that you can use the textures and the, uh, a very, an excellent reference of lights and color in order to sometimes even project those, those textures in the CGI model. Yeah. So it's sometimes uh, when I was reviewing the shots, I was even myself confused about what was animatronic and what was CGI. Wow. Now there's really cool moments specifically where like a raptor's tail will trip somebody. Is uh -huh. there, how is that happening? Like is, is there somebody, is there something physically tripping? That's, that's uh, uh, Chris. He's a brilliant, he's a brilliant actor and he knows that, you know, it's like, it's all, a, it's all a choreography, you know, you know what the dinosaur is doing and, and Chris knows and he did it. So there's no physical thing tripping, like I saw, I saw some behind the scenes footage of a guy wearing a tail. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have for, the, for example, for the, anima, for the Indoraptor, we have these uh, two guys wearing this kind of weird suit with a, with a head and with a tail and they were moving like the real uh, Indoraptor on set. So it was very easy to frame the scene with them as a reference. This might be a weird question, but it's fascinating to me watching the Indoraptor's um, entrance into the scene, and you have these really cool shots of the shadows of his face on the wall as yeah. like the light hits him. Like, how do you, like, when you get a CGI dinosaur doing that, like, how do you create a shadow? Is that done through CGI? That's uh, the magic of the guys from ILM. They, they, I was even myself impressed with, with some of the shadows they they did on post-production because it's a very tricky effect to create a shadow and, and make it look like realistic and they, they they did an amazing job. Now for me as a Jurassic Park fan growing up just to be here on Kooloa Ranch where like they shot the famous Sam Neill moment with the log and the kids are behind yeah. it. Because I remember Spielberg had to come here because of a hurricane. It's so crazy how it all happened. But there is so many iconic moments but you have so many cool references that are very subtle. You have like the object in the mirrors are closer than they appear. You kind of put the you put them in front of a gyrosphere instead of in front of the uh, log. You have a little goat in one moment. Can you talk about the idea of, as a director, putting these subtlety messages in there, but they never take you out of the film you're in. They're like they're perfectly designed homages. Like they're not yeah. too much. I think that's a very interesting question because the movie it's a twist on the Jurassic uh, storytelling, you know. And in that sense, we see some of the shots that we saw in the other movies, but the different, the, but the meaning is totally different. Yeah. I mean, you have the the shot of the mirror, but this time instead of seeing a. a T-Rex, you see Owen. Yep. It's like a way of telling the audience it's not about dinosaurs anymore. It's like telling in advance it's about human beings now. Wow, it's such, it's so cool how you think about that kind of stuff. Now, Michael Giacchino, I think, is one of the greatest composers oh, yeah. of all time, but so is John Williams. And I think one of the things that I think you and Colin did really well with the Jurassic World films is you still utilize Michael's score as a leading score, but you still kind of trickle in a little bit of Williams' theme. What is the balance of not hitting the, the, hitting the theme at the right moment? Because it has to be an exact moment to kind exactly. of hear that famous thing. You need, there's, you need to have a reason, you know? It's like, a, it's so great to have four, mo four movies behind you, you know? So you can always refer elements like locations, lines, 
uh, characters, you know, the music is the same. So uh, there is a moment in this film, it's a pretty emotional moment, where you see the ending of Isla Nublar, yeah. and we see a, a, an animal there uh, recreating a moment that we saw in the first Jurassic Park, and that's the perfect moment to play the melody from John Williams in a very different mood, different, yeah. different tone, you know. It's like closing a circle, and when you close yeah. that circle, then you play the music of the original movie. Mm. One more question before I have to go, but the gyrosphere one shot in the water. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And I was wondering, like, are, are you stitching it as the water level comes up? It looks so cool. I don't know how you <laughs> pulled it off, but, like, it was, was how many t days did that take to shoot that? It's one shot in the movie. We were, yeah, we were shooting that, I think, for, like, two or three days, wow. something like that. And of course, I mean, there was a choreography with camera using the water. You know, I, I did the impossible, you know, and I had a, a lot of experience uh, playing with water on set. Yeah. So I knew how to somehow cheat sometimes, hide the, the cuts in between takes. You the know? levels like, would move and it would exactly. almost like stitch. It was like Hitchcock and rope, man. Like when you would go behind people's black jackets and stuff exactly. like that. It was so cool. All 